When you're shooting down low and you're using a long lens or a shallow depth of field or a combination of both, you get a really nice thin plane of focus. Sometimes in an edit, it's easy to break the plane of focus and it's a real giveaway and telltale sign that you've done something in your editing. It's really eye-catching and it leaves the viewer wondering what on earth has happened. So in today's video, I'm gonna show you exactly what I mean and how to avoid it. tuning in to another editing toolbox video. I'm Craig Turner Bullock from Unleashed Education. In these weekly videos, Charlotte and I take turns each to share a quick tip trick or technique with you that we hope will help make your editing life a little bit easier. Today I'm talking about planes of focus. So let's take a look at this image. It's a little Frenchy puppy that I met when I was back home in Guernsey um, last year. And this is fairly typical of what happens when you get to a nice low angle. So if we look at the image here, you'll see the dog is nice and sharp. I've shot this with a long lens, so buildings are out of focus in the background here. And if we zoom in, let's go to 100% and look at the ground, you can actually see the focus plane here. So this is the area that is in focus. And because we're at that very low angle, long lens, shallow depth of field, there isn't actually much depth to what areas are in focus here. And you can see that even the pores are a little bit soft, but the face is really sharp. So the face is in focus, it's fallen within that plane, and the ground here is sharp. Now, if I'm editing images and I'm thinking about what I want to do, often there's one or two things that I think might be distracting. And in this image, we've got here some little brown rocks that are a little bit distracting. We've got this little white circle here which catches my eye too. This white circle is pretty easy to deal with. It's out of focus anyway. And often you'll use a patch tool or spot healing brush or remove tool to deal with this. So I will use the patch tool and content aware fill. So I can make my selection press shift and delete, and then I get my fill box, just go content aware fill, and it's done a reasonable job. It's left a little bit of color distortion there, so I might just move it and see what happens. Doesn't really like that, so we can fix that up in a minute. If we go over to the in focus areas, and I remove this, let's select there, and I do the same thing. You can see it's filled this kind of sharper area with blur. We do the same again here. And it's done exactly the same thing. Now it's only small and I know that it might seem insignificant, but if we actually now look at this image, this little bit of blur here does actually stand out. And that's because it's blurry amongst a sharp area. So the eye often gets caught on those things and is confused by them. So just watching out for those different planes of focus and how much or how little is sharp will make a really big difference to when you're tidying up your images and cloning out those distractions. So what I would recommend if you find this happening when you're using the patch tool or the remove tool or any of those tools is that maybe you switch to the clone tool and let's clone from somewhere else in the image that is within that same plane of focus. You also have to remember here that you don't want there to be really obvious repetitions. So anything that's a really obvious repeating pattern also will grab your attention and grab the eye of the viewer. So now if I look at this full screen, the plane of focus is no longer broken. It's not catching my eye. It's not making me wonder, oh, what's been removed from down in that corner? And that's it really. That's my quick tip for this week don't break your plane of focus. It does become a distraction and a problem in your edits. If you're finding that when you're using the patch tool or remove tool or the spot healing brush and you're losing that sharpness in the plane of focus, switch over to something else like the clone stamp and make sure that you're repairing those blurry areas from objects that you've removed. Hope that's been helpful this week. I will see you again in a couple of weeks time for my next video.